number one. I want to read verse number. Oh, let's read. Let's start out verse number eighteen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the flies. When as his mother Mary was a spouse or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, they were married. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away private, privately, or privately, uh, to quietly uh, break that engagement. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared uh, unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary to be your, uh, to, to be your uh, wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, which means Savior, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this was all this was done that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet or, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Uh, uh, be, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God <coughs> with us. Let's kind of uh, familiarize ourselves with that first Christmas and everything that was happening as we look at uh, Luke chapter number 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this uh, taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And there, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into uh, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So it was, and so it, it was, and so it was that while they were there. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, while Mary wrapped that first Christmas gift. When she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, <coughs> because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And it should, there shall, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that as the angels were gone away uh, from them into heaven, that the shepherds, they said one to another, Let us go and even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The Bible says, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all them which heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Man, it's a constant thought of everything that's happening and who he is and what his name is called and what he's all about. Mary's pondering in him. The Bible says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had seen and which was told them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, who was called, uh, his name, who was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the world. I want to jump back to what Matthew said. The Bible says in verse number 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, 
shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want to look at that. We have the whole story of Christmas, of what at least is happening initially uh, as, as the scenes begin to unfold before us as we look at Christmas. And we look at that Emmanuel that God gave us, Emmanuel. Last week I talked to you for a little bit about a name and what is in a name and, uh, and the importance of a name. And, and let's look at that name, Emmanuel. The Shakespeare said this, what is in a name? That which is called a rose by any other name would still smell as sweet. Shakespeare knew that uh, in that name meant something. That rose, even though it was called something else, would still smell sweet. There was a young man who was a part of, uh, of, of a great army, and uh, uh, he was part of Napoleon's army. And uh, he decided he wanted to drop out of the army. He was fearful. He was afraid. And the news got to Napoleon himself. And uh, he said, I'm going to talk to that man about wanting to leave the army. And so uh, Napoleon brought him in and he said, young man, what is your name? And he said, my name is Napoleon. The story went forth that he wanted to drop out of the army. And Napoleon looked at him. He said, either change your ways or change your name. Napoleon said, I don't want anything about my name associated with yours because you're dropping out of the army. Either change your ways or change your name. It's interesting about a name. There was a young man born in Nigeria. It's your story. He was born in Nigeria and he was given a name. I'm not even sure the name that was given to him. But because he came to know Jesus Christ as a Savior, he said, I no longer want to carry the pagan name that my parents have has given me. He said, I want to change my name to a Christian name. So he changed his name to Emmanuel. He said, my name shall be called Emmanuel. And so when folks begin to ask him about his name, he said, they said, your name has changed. No longer is it the pagan name. What is the meaning of your name, Emmanuel? He said, let me tell you, Emmanuel, I gave my heart and my life to Jesus Christ, my Savior, and now I experience God with me. So I've changed my name to Emmanuel, that it may be a testimony to all who know me that I'm no longer bound by my paganism. I'm no longer bound by sin. I'm no longer hopeless. I'm no longer without. But I am Emmanuel. God has come into my life. I no longer walk in darkness. But now I've been given the light and I realize that I am Emmanuel. God is with me. Can I tell you that that is what Christmas is all about? That God is with us. And Christmas is a life-changing story because no longer is God afar, but God is with us. And that is the story of Christmas. Emmanuel. God is with us. Let's talk about Emmanuel. God is with us. I want to look at a few things this morning. The very first thing, don't lose out with me. You understand as we go on through the message. But I need to tell you that Emmanuel is with you. Emmanuel will always be with you. God is with us, and God will always be with us in this life. Whether you realize Him as your Savior or not, God is still here. But for those who know Him as their personal Savior, your message this morning, not only is God with you, but God is in you. And so, He is God who is with us in prosperity. God was with us in prosperity. I'm not preaching a prosperity message this morning because you'll understand as we move along. So I'm not even going to explain myself here. But I want, to, I want you to know that God is with you in the experiences of prosperity. Amen. Where is God? God is always there. And when you prosper, God is there. God knows happiness. Did you ever look into the eyes of a, of a, of a new parent? Amen. Did you ever see happiness like that one who is holding a baby? 
I mean, those are some of the landmarks of life when you think about the gift of a child. And God is there with you when you are in prosperity. You know, uh, some of you folks have told me, and I'm not rushing it because I started late. Someone told me that if you enjoy parenthood, you'll really enjoy grandparenthood. That's what I've been told. I, I'm, not, I'm not rushing it. So look in the eyes of a parent. Look in the eyes of a grandparent. They know prosperity and they know happiness. I mean, it's a joy when you think about a new life and you think about those things. Amen. But I need to tell you that God knows all about happiness. Amen. The babe who was born in Bethlehem, he brought happiness. He knew all about happiness. Amen. He brought happiness to a mom and dad Mary and Joseph. Can you imagine? There they are and they're poor and they're, they're all the inconveniences of everything. I mean, wouldn't you rather be uh, at home with your child? Wouldn't you rather be in uh, an environment that is comfortable? But even though everything around them seems to be chaos and everything around them seems to be going as it's unplanned, amen, they first of all knew that this was God's son. God got in the middle of the situation and they were delivering God's son. But but they were also experiencing that as we're parents for the first time. And you know how that is. And you know, there's there's lots of apprehensions, and, but, but, but the zeal and the excitement uh, kind of outweighs all that because, man, this is happy. We have a baby. Amen. Here it is, Emmanuel, God with us in prosperity, times of prosperity. Think about those moments in life that are milestones. When you think about having a child, you think about uh, yourself, maybe uh, when, when, when you reach a goal, whether it's something in your childhood or your adolescence, or whether it's graduation or whether it's college, you think about those milestones of marriage and how much better does it get to find someone who you love with all your heart and they love you with all their heart and you're sharing this joy of coming together as one, that, that, that children, those goals, those things that, 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 that you reach in life that, that are just milestones. I need to tell you that God is there with you even in the prosperous moments. Sometimes we don't think about Him being there in those moments. But He's Emmanuel that's God with us even in the happiness. Do you realize that He brought happy moments as a baby, but we look at His life and He grew up and Luke describes him as all wisdom and stature. He had favor with God and favor with man. You talk about prosperity. This man had favor with his heavenly father, but he also had favor with man. Can you imagine what it's like that you go somewhere and you begin to sit down and, and you begin to teach and all of a sudden 5,000 men and then there's women and there's children that follow you? You think that's prosperity? You think that's popularity? He knew all about that. He knew all about that. Ah, popularity. He knew what it was like to provide them with spiritual food and physical food. He knew what it was like for everyone to think so highly of him. And he had personal favor on prosperity. Amen. He knows what it's like to have to break away because of prosperity and popularity. He has to break away to a mountain to have a little bit of time to himself. He knows the joys of life. You think you're popular? You think you have people who want you? He knows all about that. Emmanuel, God with us. <clears throat> I think about this. I think one of the joyous things about Christmas is friendship. How do we show friendship? Well, Sister Jan, you said it well this morning. And by the way, some of you need to get mail out of your boxes out there. It's really stuffed. I wanted to announce that. There's some boxes that are really... You know what that's all about? Because we pick up that mail, and we realize that I have some friends that are thinking about me. You go to your mailbox and you get a Christmas card from someone, you know what? They put some thought into you. They, they, they made a card out, they wrote a note out, they addressed it, they put a stamp on it, they, 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 the efforts to go to the mailbox or in your church mailbox, you know what? We have friends. Amen. Do you know what? God is with us in our relationships and giving us friends. Amen. He's Emmanuel. That's God with us. You think about your efforts and reaching out to your family and your friends to give them a card at Christmas. Amen. Thank God for, for close relationships. God knows all about that. Do you know He's Emmanuel? God with us in our friendships and in our relationships. Think about it this Christmas. And think about this. That, that He is God in prosperity. That one day 
Amen. He was called to a wedding, Sister God. Amen. He showed up because he wanted to celebrate this milestone with his family and with his friends. And he shows up, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the wedding, he's wanting it to be a good time. He's wanting it to be prosperous for them. All of a sudden, they run out of wine. And his mother comes to him, Jesus, Jesus, oh, my time has not yet come. And so all of a sudden, he begins to say, bring me the, the pots that are full of water. And, and Mary says, whatsoever he asks, you do it. He said, God is with us in prosperity. He said, wait a second. Wait a second. I want this to turn out well for them. And so he gives them wine. The wine now that is the second is even better than the first. And that's not usually the custom of how things are done. But God says, I'm Emmanuel. God with you. Even in your prosperity. Even in your friends and in your relationships. I want it to be well. Do you realize that God wants us to prosper? in our family relationships, and in our relationships with others, because He's Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. He wants it to be well. In fact, His presence made a difference. And you find that when He came to the wedding, He made a difference. And because He came in and, and all the relationships were different, He taught them at the seas of Galilee because He wanted them to know about God. They followed Him and He had popularity and He had a crowd because He was Emmanuel, God with Him. His presence made a difference. Him being at the wedding and, and then their, their, their growth and, and their goals and the good things about life. He came and Emmanuel made a difference. I need to tell you that this Christmas, Amen. everything about us being aware of the Emmanuel God with us is prosperous. Our relationships with our family and our friends, why? Because Emmanuel's with us. It's different. Even when the lawn runs out, it's different. Emmanuel's here to take care of us. This is an opportunity for God. So in the middle of shortcomings, in the middle of things not turning out the way you, you expect it to, what Emmanuel's there, God changes the situation. <coughs> but he's God in the middle of adversity too. Not everything about serving God, listen folks, we're all aware of that. Not everything about serving God means that we're exempt from having adversities. Remember the word of God says it rains upon the just and the unjust. So all of us are going to have storm day, stormy days. Those days when things don't go right and the sun isn't shining. But it's interesting that when we first hear this name Emmanuel, is back in uh, the, the, the book of, uh, of, of Isaiah where we find that there were two kings, the king of Syria and the king of Israel, who comes against Ahab, the king of Judah. And we find that as these two kings come against Ahaz, the king of Judah, the Bible says in Isaiah 7, verse number 2, that the people were so fearful that they shook like the trees in the forest or in the wind. They were scared. They're shaking. Because two allied forces has come against Judah, and they're fearful that they're being overtaken. And so the prophet comes on the scene, and he says, I want you to ask God for a sign. Ahaz is very belligerent, and he doesn't ask God for a sign. But all of a sudden, the prophet begins to speak. And he says, let me tell you something. If you will trust God, God will be with you. And he begins to give this promise. He says, ask God for the sign. And even though I had this, the prophet says, the Lord himself will give you a sign. For a virgin shall be with child. And will give birth to a son. And will call his name Emmanuel. God is with us in prosperity, but God is with us in adversity. God knows all about sorrow. I want you to think about something for a minute. 
this God who knows all about sorrow, we will never, ever, ever fully understand the sorrow that God does. <coughs> Can you imagine to see your only son crucified? Come on with me this morning, this Christmas morning. There's probably been a few people that's ever watched their child be crucified. And those who watched probably never ever had to watch their child be crucified because they did the will of the Father and was perfect in all ways. Can you imagine this morning, this Emmanuel? God is with us. He's with us during our prosperity, but He's with us during our adversities, enduring our sorrows. Listen, God has no much sorrow. He's, he's familiar with that. God, He'll still be around even when family and friends forsake us. Where were the 5,000? Jesus was popular. He had lots of friends that was following Him. But where were they at during the crucifixion? Where were they? <clears throat> you see, He found out that there are some friends who will be with you through thick and thin, but some friends will thin out when things start getting thick. Amen. And so here it is that Jesus dies a lonely death, but He's still Emmanuel, God with us. And although it was God's design from the very beginning that He sent His only begotten Son, yet for God the Father to watch His only begotten Son take on Him the sins of the world, it was unbearable. That was your sin and my sin. Amen. That He that knew no sin took on all sin. That we who know sin may know what it's like to be without sin. Talking about Emmanuel, God with us. And so when we go through those difficulties of life, I need to tell you and remind you that God is still Emmanuel, the God that is with you. And you may say, Brother Sibyl, but I don't feel Him right now. There are moments that I haven't felt God. Amen. That is when we walk by faith and not by feeling, knowing that God is there. Amen. What do they say? Hindsight is 2020. Because when we look back in our life, we realize that in those most difficult times, that He was still Emmanuel, God that is with us even in those times of adversity. Amen. Can I tell you that baby Jesus when he was born and Mary wrapped him up, they named him Emmanuel and he didn't have to change his name because he stood for everything that his name meant. He is God that's with us in prosperity and in adversity. Amen. <coughs> he is the only the God of Prosperity and the God of diversity, but I need to tell you that He is the God of opportunity. That when we <clears throat> realize that God is with us, it allows every situation to present itself as an opportunity. Every situation. So whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, it becomes an opportunity for Emmanuel, God, with us to be able to work in us. So there are some things that we get excited about in life. You know, those milestones that we reach. Some of you know what it's like to be into retirement. That's awesome. But it's also an opportunity because Emmanuel, God, with you, is with you in that prosperity. Some of you, as you birth children, it's an opportunity for God to present that He's Emmanuel, God with you, to help you in those situations that you're going to need as you parent that child and nurture its heart to work out. In our marriage, it's an opportunity for God to be Emmanuel, God with us, because a three-fold cord cannot easily be broken. It is us uniting, but it is God uniting with us. And what can God do through us? Amen. Thank God that it is an opportunity. And some of you have some opportunities here this morning, whether you're young or whether you're old. The life has presented some new situations. Some are prosper uh, prosperous and some are adversities. But I need to tell you that because you realize that Christmas is Emmanuel, God with you, it presents opportunity. What does God want to do for you? And when we look at Jesus, uh, you find that, that, that He 
saw that everything was an opportunity. Do you remember one day when his disciples went on, but he sat down at the well, and the woman at the well, we're familiar with the story, she came, and she came during the middle of the day because it was hot, and she was embarrassed, she didn't want to run into anyone, but she ran into Jesus. Maybe her life looked like adversity, but God looked and said, you're looking at adversity, but I'm looking at opportunity, because now you're going to be introduced to Emmanuel, God is with you. And so the we know the story begins to, to, to begin to uh, transpire and she begins to share her story but he knows all about her story before she even verbalizes it to him and so she finds that though she feels hopeless and helpless that God says there's help for you and there's hope for you. You came to draw from the water where you'll thirst again but let me tell you about a well that I can give you that I'll give you water that you'll never thirst again and Jesus said I'm Emmanuel God with you so your adversity has just now changed it into an opportunity because of Emmanuel, God with you. That is what Christmas is about. He changes everything. Right. A baby changed everything because now adversity or whether prosperity, it is an opportunity because He is Emmanuel, God with us. I love this. <coughs> I love this. When we have our devotions at night and we pray as a family, we know that family people are going through various things. We will pray for them. And uh, as we pray, oftentimes the girls will repeat after us and pray. And so uh, <clears throat> last week, uh, Brother David said he was sitting in the foyer <clears throat> at, at Blacklight. <clears throat> he had texted me after Blacklight and he said he was touched because all of a sudden uh, there was a little blondie that came up to him and said, Brother David, is your leg filled out? You know why she knew all about that? Because we had prayed. My wife said, she said the same thing to Sister Tina when she was saying, Sister Tina, you feeling better? Because you know what? She realizes that Emmanuel, God with us, is an opportunity to change our situations. Amen. May we have faith of a child and say that this Christmas, amen, that no matter what is before us, but prosperity or adversity, it now becomes an opportunity. But can I tell you, that your opportunity isn't just an opportunity, but your opportunity now changes into a responsibility. Every one of you in here are responsible because He is Emmanuel, God with us. Every time that God gives you or changes your opportunity, it now becomes a responsibility, amen, that we recognize that the presence of God is here and I have a responsibility to God to make sure that I allow Emmanuel, God with us, to change the situation. The shepherds were on a hillside. The angels spoke to them. And then there was a multitude. And now they say, let's go into Bethlehem and see this thing which was spoken unto us. And they go and they see baby Jesus. And they say, wait a second. Now we've seen Emmanuel, God with us, Sister Jan. We have an opportunity. But Brother Wallen, we also have a responsibility that we've got to go tell everybody about this Jesus. And that is Emmanuel, God with us, Brother Joseph. The Bible says that everything that Mary, Mary knew all about this baby. You can misjudge her if you want. You can misjudge me. But I know what is conceived in me is of the Holy Ghost. And so she comes and this isn't really the place I want to give birth to a child. This isn't the way that I've expected it as a young girl dreaming of being a mother and being the mother of the Messiah. It's not what I expected. But she said, He's a man who will come. So now it's an opportunity. And there's a responsibility. So she ponders all these things. Sister Mother and God. All these things, Sister Mother. She ponders it because now opportunity turns into responsibility. That he's a man that God will pass. So on my verse, uh, verse 8, I've got to allow God. But in my prosperity, I've got to allow God. And anywhere in between, I have to realize that this is an opportunity. And because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Brother Eli, I didn't have to wait this morning to come to.
the church to pray. But I've been prayerful in my home and in my vehicle. I've been prayerful as I'm here. Because Brother Bobby, he's a man God with us. Sister Denny, it doesn't matter. I can pray anywhere, anytime. Anybody ever realize that you can start thinking about a lot of things in your mind can have all kinds of imagination? Anybody like that? Or is it just me? But you know what? When we come to Emmanuel, God with us, and we begin to 